Hi, and welcome to This Country Called Agriculture. I'm your host, Rob Eric, and today we're going to talk about some technology that's affecting us in the ag industry. Uh, on our show today, uh, I've got Glenn Kaitler from SAIT, and you're the Applied uh, research chair for RFID applications. Is that correct? Did that, I get that one right? Yeah, very well done. Good, good. And you're doing some uh, research with uh, ultra high frequency RFID. Um, and today we want to talk about what RFID is and, and give us some background on it. So I'm going to turn it over to you because you're the expert in the field and tell us about this technology. Okay, RFID, an acronym, radio frequency identification been around for quite a long time, not necessarily a household flavor just yet for everyone, but it's in a lot of places where, you know, people aren't aware of already, right? A lot of us may have it in, in, our, in our key fob, right? It's how we get in and out of our car. That's how when I toss my gym bag with my key fob in the trunk that it doesn't actually lock in there because the technology won't allow the trunk to lock, for example, um, been around certainly um, Area 51 in the 80s, that's how they first tracked nuclear waste, was with RFID technology. So it's a, it's a relatively mature technology at that level. And then the next thing happens is that because it's radio frequency, there are a variety of different radio frequencies that can be used to make the technology work. So before we get into that, um, let's talk about exactly that, how it works, uh, certainly um, how the technology has evolved since the 80s or even before. And let's talk a little bit about active and passive technologies as well. All right. So the primary technology that's the most prevalent is certainly the passive RFID technology. So the RFID tag by nature has no battery. It's just really a small possibly form of wire, mm -hmm. has an RFID chip in it, and that's the extent of it. And it's basically awoken by an RFID reader. So, so great for putting on packages, containers, inert objects that you're trying to track. Yeah, things could be going down a conveyor belt, could be going on to a semi-trailer, um, you know, assets of some kind, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're always tracking assets and in this industry, no different, mm -hmm. except the asset, you know, could be 900 pounds and it's a moving, you know, side of beef, right? It's a biological asset, that's right. <laughs> Very, yeah. So, no, very interesting technology, and it's allowed it to be relatively inexpensive to track those assets. You know, you mentioned the word active tags, right? Mm -hmm. Active and passive RFID. So a passive RFID tag, a couple of dollars, right? An active RFID tag, now maybe 50 or $60, but it goes on to an asset that may be, you know, $100,000, you know, uh, an IV pump in a hospital, mm -hmm. right? So. It's all kind of a relative sort of nature, something that can be reused, you know, as they maybe change out assets. And, but again, that's what they're trying to do is where are my assets when I need to know, right? Mm -hmm. So today we're talking about biological assets and more specifically cattle. So let's, uh, let's move into some of that, uh, uh, some of the things that you've brought here today in terms of, of, of the tags. For sure. So, yeah, so again, I mean, uh, our industry now, pretty much a decade of using what we call low-frequency RFID technology, right? The, the story, right, I mean, 2003, you know, the BSE crisis, we needed something, some way to track animals, right, to determine traceability, determine, you know, herds of origin, a variety of different things that we needed to know. Mm -hmm. um, and as with technology, quite often when you have one, Right, all of a sudden you realize, well, there are a lot of other possible use cases mm -hmm. for the technology. If I think about my, you know, 1980s, uh, you know, brick phone that I called a cell phone, right? Well, what did I do? I phoned somebody, but now I rarely phone anybody, but I use it for a lot of different things. So technology, mm -hmm. and it's no different in the RFID. Good example, because that's another application of radio frequency, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, so very interesting. And so again, I mean, it, it did the job, right? And it has opened up opportunities for, well, if it does this, maybe we could do something else with it. Does this technology have other capabilities? And that's really, you know, what we're looking at. Excellent. So now you've brought some equipment with you here today. And give us a quick run through of, of the type of uh, equipment needed to, to do some of the uh, uh, data capture with that. So again, you're going to need an RFID tag, 
Um, I'm sure the audience is very familiar with the, the typical button tag for an ear. They may not have actually seen what's actually inside that particular tag, right? So the, what we call the inlay. Mm -hmm. And in the case of low frequency, because of the low frequency, it takes about a thousand winds of copper wire. So how many feet is that? <laughs> it's about 320. 320 feet? <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. So, yeah. It's a very long antenna. A very long antenna. So, and, and again, it does work, very short range, but it works. So we've been looking at something that we call UHF. So now this is ultra high frequency. Here's a UHF tag, a very, very small antenna form factor, mm -hmm. which is simply the physics of it. The, as the frequency goes up, the size of the antenna comes down. And it's just simply a linear, you know, mathematical function of that. So instead of having 320 feet, we need about 19 centimeters. Wow. Right? So significantly smaller form factor, very simple to make. You can make these on a, you know, dot, uh, you know, an inkjet printer now if you wanted to, right? So very, very simple. So then the, the challenge in any industry, though, is how do you package it? Mm -hmm. How do you actually take this little very fine piece of electronics and put it into something that's going to last in the environment, for the lifespan, for whatever that package requires, right? So again, we need tags in Canada that can last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to put those in there? So we package them you know, into a plastic which is a very interesting kind of a technology and again makes it very simple for for a user who uh, you know producer who puts on uh, RFID ear tags now they can use their same applicator the same mail button and it just happens to be a different tag with a different technology so right now yeah, there's a bit of different read rate with some of this as well and that's one of the key benefits so let's talk about that for a sure. minute so again low frequency was designed for you know a very short read range you know so it can read the tag inches, yeah, yeah six or seven inches away so with a UHF technology now we're basically in an area where we can read tags from up to 30 feet away mm -hmm. right so again very easy to read tags and to read a lot at one time which is one of the biggest features that we have with the newer RFID technology the biggest challenge we have in our research with the low frequency is what we call the collision avoidance. Okay, and when we come back after okay. a commercial break, we're gonna have a closer look at how these things work and the uh, research that you're doing with the livestock. Join us.